Good, then let's start. So today uh, I wanted to talk about the definition of support and go a bit deeper into like sufficiency and necessity, for example. And then we see how that can be used in the mappings between layers, something that Timothy experimented a lot with. And I think that's very related. So I would start off with uh, to see what we have in mind as a definition. Uh, I think Timothy always said that uh, if something supports something else, if A supports B, then if A is true, it's more likely that B is true. That's what he said, right? Um, what is this more likely thing? Is it when we talk about the negation, like uh, op uh, opposition, uh, if A is true, then is B less likely true, or is the inverse, mm -hmm. the negation of B, more likely to be true? Yeah, that, that's or is that the same. I, I actually, that, that's very interesting. If you put it that way, I, I would disagree. And I also intuitively always say, for me, support is I interpret as it gives you reason to believe, and the negation of that to me sounds better like this um, ah, um although then again the negation of uh, um makes it more likely is not makes it less likely it is does not make it more likely so i think you uh negated incorrectly there and then it does make sense the the, the normally the negation is the contraposite right if a implies b then the contraposite well, no, sorry, the contraposite is not the negation, it's the equivalent. It's not B implies not A. Um, the, of course, here we're not speaking about real implication. And that's one thing we had, and I want to remind us, uh, there is, uh, we had a Boolean saying proves. Uh, that is, it doesn't just make it more likely, but it makes it certain. So the, here the premise would be a sufficient condition for the conclusion. And that's a Boolean, it's not always true. Uh, the negation, I think is just does not make more likely. Uh, if you want to say- have, Yeah, uh, if, go ahead, I'm, yeah. I'm urgent, eager because I have a, yeah, but go ahead. Uh, if you want to say that the negation of the premise makes the conclusion less likely, for me, that's a different claim. It's a, it's a separate claim, not A uh, makes not B, you know. Fuzzy implies not B, <laughs> or, or absolute implies. OK, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just got eager. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have what I think is a pretty formal definition of all of this and could be formalized. Um, but it's through the lens of scoring um, that I think is through a, a lens of scoring that also matches a lot uh, our concepts of believing and increasing believability and that sort of thing. Um, I look at it through a scoring lens um, The where you could say that the score is between zero or one or zero percent and 100 percent of whether you agree with a claim, right? Um, so 100 percent is complete agreement, zero percent is complete disagreement. Um, then I break up uh, through our conversations, this has evolved, but, you know, the negation is like the easiest way to picture the negation is to take your claim and end it with the phrase, the, the phrase is true. The negation is, is false. And that takes care of language problems about, well, which thing are you negating or whatever. Um, uh, I, I, I'll take a break for you guys to make comments on that, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I have a fundamental question here because are you implying that scoring and support is the same? Because you said you're formalizing support, but you instantly jump to scoring. Um, I'm defining it as I see it. Um, and I, like I said, I think there's analogies. Um, and I think it's easier for me to lay out how I see it in scoring terms before I, I try to roll back and see how it works with not scoring um, put differently can can you support without scoring yes so how do you formalize it and what does it mean 
because that's the I don't know right I know how to formalize it with scoring um but and and so I think you I think uh I'll have to work through that after I after I say how I see it in scoring um I, I think the idea is it increases the reasons or the believability or your reasons to agree with and that's that's what supporting is um given that support is a claim or we have modeled it as a claim that means that um a uh, support of a support increases your reasons to agree with the fact that that support can be used in that way right um okay so so now um but so i see then a relationship of mutual exclusion between the positive form of a claim and its negation and and like i said so if it's is so you know the table is brown is true its negation can be stated as the table is brown is false right um, and that clears up when it gets complicated like it was done by chinese scientists in a lab and released as a bioweapon its negation is that statement is false. It's not, you know, it, it's not where do you put the not in there. The, where, not where the not goes depends on how language works, but its negation is the fact that that phrase is false, right? Um, now, support in that situation where you have this mutual exclusion, because only one of those two could be true. It, it's either true or false. Sure, in scoring, I allow people to have somewhere in between um, but the way the scoring works is that the sum total between two mutually exclusive claims is 100 which means if you're 50 50 on the fence that means 50 goes to the positive form and 50 goes to the negative if you're 75 percent leaning towards i agree with it that means you're 25 percent leaning towards uh I disagree with it. And a support will, if it's a support of a support of, a, of the positive, will, should, if it's a valid support, sway that acceptance or the score, the percent division towards the positive one. I now 80% agree with it, and I 20% agree with the negation. Um, I'll pause again, because there's more I could go into about other kinds of mutual exclusion, but. Uh, Marc-Antoine, you have your hand raised. Thank you. Uh, first, I just want to us to prefix this. I think we did agree at some point, and I just want to check that this is still uh, an agreement. We want the definitions of support, the, the, the formalizations of support to be a bit plug and play, because there'll be many ways of defining uh, scoring. And uh, I think we have to be uh, not miss. Uh, I think it, it. You know, it's it's like it's like a formalization layer. Uh, there's going to be more disagreement about it, and it's uh, it sh needs to be there as a layer. But we need to be a bit flexible about uh, multiple potentially multiple scoring mechanisms. So that's yeah. my first prefix. But but um, for example, I try to propose certain heuristics of what makes a good scoring algorithm, um, yeah. which is. Yeah. A support of something, this, this is one of the ones I put it in, a, in the document somewhere, but a, a support um, should only increase your acceptance to some degree or not at all. It should not be able to detract. In other words, you, you can't say something, um, no matter how absurd it is, it shouldn't make you believe the opposite more. It, it can you that can should totally be a support defeat of the, it. That should be a support of exactly, the exactly. And you can have the same thing going both ways, but a support only improves or has zero impact, right? That sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah, I, I don't think there will be many such general rules, but that's certainly one that feels it feels right to me. Uh, totally. One thing I wanted to say is I totally see uh, numerical scores, and we'll we'll want them, we'll need them. Uh, I think that and, and another distinction I'd like to know, I, I was very amused and I forgot to, to pick it up. At the beginning, the definition that Felix quoted from Tim was uh, makes it more likely to happen. And Stephen went makes you more likely to believe. So one, since, one, one is causal, the other is epistemic. Uh, 
there are sometimes translation of epistemic to causal, sometimes not, uh, or even look at the uh, endless disagreement between uh, mathematicians who follow Bayesian statistics versus more traditional uh, universe, you know, closed world probabilities, uh, which I'm not sure I totally understand, to be honest, and I'm in the field. Uh, but I'm saying it's people don't agree on this. I don't think this is something we'll resolve. However, I think supporting a given mechanism like, st like the Asian statistics, which I believe is certainly sound, it might not be the only true one, but it's certainly sound, it has that benefit, um, is a goal. Like the, the plug and play should support some, at least by Asian. Uh, and the third thing I want to say, besides the distinction, is on the other hand, people are bad about reasoning about probabilities. And I'm very tempted to not ask probabilities of people, or if I do, well, then let's do it very formally like Tetlock, where it's like, okay, give me what's your uh, probability of this and what's your uncertainty prediction on this. And then we'll basically favor the few people who understand probabilities statements uh, over the statements of, pe of most people who don't. And that could be fine. <laughs> Steven, over. So I'm on board with plug and play specializations of support. I always have been. Uh, but I think the task then is when we're defining specializations, we also need to agree what the common abstraction is, what is the common fundamental subset of support. And I think that's the definition that Felix is after right now. Like wh what is common to uh, any type of specialization of support? And I do think that is more in epistemological terms of, gives me more reason to believe. Uh, and it cannot express things like necessarily makes you believe, or maybe, but, uh, I think that's a question. Like, what is the common denominator of any specialization? Yeah. Okay. I, I do. I do think that this distinction between uh, proof and verbal and you know fuzzy support, let's call it that way, is important. I'm willing to have a non-numeric version and the base layer to answer that. Tim, Felix, Jamie, opinions. Hey everyone, I'm joining the party a little bit late. So I only have so much context, so no opinions for now, surprisingly. Yeah, I have to not No strong opinion right now, I'm just listening and processing. <laughs> yeah, that my, the whole thing about the base layer again is, is to me, it's, it's you know, it, it needs to be, I mean, the, you need to balance design concerns. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do is balance design concerns. So I see uh, no problem with a base layer that just uses the more okay. abstract meaning of support with no fields or anything like that, as long as it doesn't make the system impossible to implement or just add overhead that's unnecessary. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I think we all agree on the, the concept of support. In that it's it's supposed to you know a support improves uh, your believability acceptance yeah of that thing. Um, I think that support. Um, tell me tell me if there's anything I say here that you question or or disagree with. Um, I'm sort of repeating what's in our model, but um, support connects one claim to another. In the, in the format of premise uh, supports a conclusion. Um, there's questions about, you know, multi-premise and all that, but we don't have to go there right now. Um, well, and that the premise, about. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. But um, the premise um, can be the negation of a claim, right? So you could say this, that this thing is not true supports this other thing or supports negation. Um, and we also agree that um, uh, support can be to the negation of a support. In other words, um, in colloquial terms, sort of, it's it's an argument against uh, that other argument or the effectiveness of that other argument. Um, other things I would add here is that um, when you see a support, 
there are two ways to attack its effectiveness, um, which is a term we haven't defined. Um, and one way is attacking the support, which means it's a fallacy or otherwise uh, invalid. And another is attacking its underlying premise, saying that that's not true. Um, so yeah, I think I think those are all same concepts that we agree on in terms of that. I, I, I'll agreement. There's a third way of attacking a support, but it's a bit meta. Uh, it's if A implies B, and I say we should do A because we want B, I could say, well, A also causes C, which we don't want. So here I'm not attacking the validity of A, but I'm saying A is undes undesirable in its own right. So this is more in the decision support than in the belief support, and which may be a separate scoring layer uh, is it, isn't this, it can be multi-criterion. Isn't this, as, as Timothy put it, just attacking the negation of support uh, or supporting the support? Uh, it, it, it's, it's not the same as attacking the claim, the, the, the premise directly. Not the premise, the, the support. Like you can say, uh, this support is not relevant because it, that it while take, right through it, it has this other this negative things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, interesting. That could be that could be a way to say it. Yeah. I mean, it fits with the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. You're proposing you're proposing to replace a simple single argument, a single criterion evaluation by a two criterion evaluation. Yeah, that works. There's there's another dimension to this. And I hate to introduce now because I didn't get to finish talking about my mutually exclusive go, ideas. Go but, <laughs> but which, which should I do? Should I finish the mutually and the mutually exclusive? Well, I, I will say to get it off my chest, and I think it's pretty yeah. simple. It's a pretty simple extension of this, which is if you have n number of mutually exclusive claims, then you also have n negations, mutually exclusive negations, right? Um, and, and you can see, I think that, let's say you have three. N squared, right? N squared. No. no, I don't think so. You, well, well, okay, in, in the simplest form, I don't, I don't think so, but I'll have to look at that a second. You, you might be right. Um, what you have, I mean, each claim has a negation. Which means, yes. it, you know, oh yeah, you have negation. That thing yeah. is true. That thing is not true, right? Um, now, um, and you have n squared, and you have when you support, supports. yeah, when when you let's say you conclusively prove one of the claims, what does this do in scoring? Looking at it from a scoring lens. Let's say you've got 100% on one of the items. That means you've got a 0% on its negation. Uh, it on also means you've got it. Exclusions. Yeah. You, it also means you've got a 0% on each of the mutual exclusions and 100% on their negations. Yes. Everybody yeah. follow that? Yeah. I do. Now, the way I see support working under this construct, construct here is when you support one claim you support the amount you raise the yeah the amount you raise the, your belief in that diminishes the negation of that also diminishes the belief of the others and raises the negation of the others yep. if you think of my th thermometer dials as a as a thing um which is one of the reasons why i say it's sufficient and you can simplify the graph by simply supporting the thing you want to support, and it will automatically do the job of adjusting all the other believability dials. Jamie. Can I jump in and say something? I'm done, but yeah. Okay. So um, this may be a little, like, I don't even know a proper uh, way of describing this, but like in the field of logic and argumentation, this may sound a little woo-woo, right? Um, but there may be something that's really important about being able to maintain a certain belief as expressed through scoring in things that seem mutually exclusive um, because the like unbelievable inherent complexity of things could be such that like a new more comprehensive truth claim arises out of 
they're somehow being the ability to reconcile what appears to be mutually exclusive things. So like, right. instead of, so like it, it, by, by people like being able, not, not they're but they're not being automatic adjustments and people being able to say like, well, actually I equally believe this because of the evidence that may be useful as some kind of indicator of something emergent or like some super set of meaning or something like that. So just wanted to so say that even points. though like, I know that's like woo woo. Right. No, 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 no. It's not what we, that that's, that's two, that, that's extremely valid. And two um, points about that. One is um, first that, yes, it, you're talking then about a case where it's not true mutual exclusion. And we, we've gone over that, you know, essentially the, the way it would work is you're pretending for now it's mutually exclusive until somebody throws a wrench in it. And then we haven't designed the way to react to that, but you would react to it by kind the of reorganizing. Mutual exclusion is a contestable claim, like anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah possibly, yes. Um, the other point is uh, scoring, as I see it, is not the answer, right? So um, it, it should be very common for people to see a score and disagree with it and say, no, my belief at the top level is that, you know, I give 75% to this one and 75% to that one. Um, and the system should just then highlight and go, well, that seems like an inconsistency. Why, you know, and it, in other words, uh, a conflict in scoring should prompt people to go after, to dig deeper, essentially. Yeah, I think it's valid to enter an, an inconsistent belief and then to be able, the system say, well, that's inconsistent with the mutual exclusion. Are you refusing the mutual exclusion? And if yeah. so, how, and how do you contest that? Uh, just one more thing on this. Uh, I'm totally working on a paraconsistent logic where uh, you say, I support, I can both support and oppose something and it's a way of saying it's controversial and it's not the same as I don't know. It's I have reason to believe both sides. So reason uh, all arguments, if, if not, you're not being very unbiased. That's pretty much any debate. If you yes. can't add support and oppose <clears throat> both of them, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying is the, 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 the conflicted state should exist even at the individual level. And of course, I for theory at the uh, social wait, wait, level. Wait, let me ask you something. But is that's is the conflicted... Wait, conflicted state in mutual exclusion or conflicted state in, in negation? Individual belief of one single claim. I could... Yeah, but is 50-50 is is the indication of no, no, no. that? Or I, is I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going with a single interval. I'm going basically with a plane. Zero, one, four, zero, one against. If zero, zero is I don't know. One, zero, I absolutely believe it. Zero, one is I absolutely disbelieve it. One, one is I'm really conflicted about this. <laughs> Okay, well, that sort of brings up uh, the other <laughs> divergence I was going to take, which is there is another dimension. It's an alternate that, story. Yeah, uh, really, I, you know, I don't, I don't see it in the in the in the conflicted versus no idea, um, but sort of. There's a kind of argument that I would say supports the negation of both sides which is the one that's like, we just don't have enough information right now. Mm. Eesh. Ah, mm. Yeah. Mm. That doesn't support anyone. It, it, it negates your reason to believe in the thing, but it also negates your reason to not believe or to disbelieve in the thing. <laughs> it, it's an argument that me is supposed to kind of pull you towards the middle of wherever you were before. It's like- Or, 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 or in my terms, something that's below one on both axes, Stephen? There's, um, I think it relates back to what I said early on in this meeting. There's a big distinction between scoring and support and just disambiguating it like this is what results in confusion. Like, it, like something struck me while, while you were explaining mutual exclusion. And while I get what you mean here, using support in two different meanings here, because what does it mean if you support one claim and then you say it, it changes the score of the mutual exclusive claims? That support you're doing here, is it scoring? Is it saying you believe that claim? Is it just adding the support? What does support mean here? I think it works with or without scoring. That's, that's why I don't, I don't, I don't quite does understand it? why you resist scoring. Because 
I, I, you are you I'm are not, making I'm not a support. I'm asking of, what does it mean? I'm, like, what does it, it mean it, when you it, say it, it, it means you should accept or believe this claim? It, it, it should increase your belief in that claim. So when you right? add a, a support, a structure, you want to calculate some type of thing? Not, not, not necessarily. Um, I think Tim is saying it's, it's not necessarily calculated, uh, if I heard you well. Uh, it works with scoring, but it doesn't need scoring. But the, the meaning, the semantics is, if you believe A, then it makes believing be more likely. You have to, you have to, you have, believing. to believe, you have to believe great and be more or equal than uh, if you believe it and if you don't. But is believing I, the same as scoring? Uh, I think uh, Tim's scoring is an expression of belief, but that doesn't mean they're, they're interchangeable. You can believe without having a score for it. And but the scoring having... is supposed to reflect, the, Tim's scoring, scoring is, is a model belief. of belief. Scoring is a model of belief. Scoring is a model of belief. And it, it, a good model should follow exactly what the semantics are, which is um, if you support a claim, it should increase your belief in it if you agree with the support. But, but when you say if you support a claim, you're, you're not about saying if you believe in that claim. You're not talking about if you add it, if there is a support claim presence on that. If it has a claim present that supports another claim, that's not what you're saying if you support a claim. When you say if you support a claim, you're basically saying if you believe in that claim. I'm connecting one claim to another claim as a premise um, supporting a conclusion. But anyone can do that. So yes, when anyone. you say I, like if anyone can do that, does it mean that, that like mutual exclusion is calculated on a collaborative level, like not on an individual level? I think belief is something that's in, in your own head. And it's exactly. not yeah. recorded by the system. And the score, the scoring is something that basically I don't, the system I don't see, believes from what it knows, kind of. I don't see that changing anything. Mutual exclusion doesn't need a scoring model either. I don't, I don't see. Uh, 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 what, let, what let, me, let me give a, a mathematical counterexample. Like we can think of belief not as a number, but as an abstract entity like would be a UUID for all I want, but treat it as a post set, partially ordered set. So you can say this belief is believed more than that belief. And you can have a partial ordering on beliefs, which are just points in space uh, with occasional uh, ordering arrows. Uh, and so I can say believing in B given A is higher than believing B given not A without quantifying any of the arrows. So that's an example of saying you can speak about higher belief without giving a number to it. So that's one thing. The second, you are raising a good question. What is, suppose there is scoring and quantification, what is it supposed to be about? Are we asking people to quantify their own belief? And do we do aggregates of that so that we know about collective belief. That's, that's a real question to ask and dig into. As opposed to um, some other kind of model like some Bayesian statistical based model in which um, sets of argumentation, reasoning and evidence are compared with each other and prior models. Um, this is something that we, you know, I've just been interested in. I'm not a mathematician personally, but I, you know, borrow the ear of one every time I can, because like there could be a case for um, looking back in time and seeing when certain hypotheses um, were just like fledgling in terms of reasoning being articulated in evidence and creating models based on the tipping point at which these hypotheses became theories or laws or something like that across the sciences. So at what, like at what instance did certain argumentation and, or whatever be present to indicate that this is something that should be commonly held as a true thing to believe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as opposed to just, um, uh, you know, tabulating, tabulating collective belief. Instead, there could be a more rigorous way of saying, based on the ways we've made decisions on models in the past, these, uh, you know, proofs are essentially more likely to be true than others, given the president, presence of evidence and argumentation. 
the, the, the full support with a few caveats. Uh, I did say uh, we want to support Bayesian networks as one scoring system because it's a bloody useful one and it's a sound one. So yes, I agree. Uh, translating statements into Bayesian beliefs is actually the difficult part. Again, sure. be, being done formally by Tetlock. And that's why I'm saying studying Tetlock is absolutely essential uh, because he's asked people to make predictions and to quantify like how likely is this and even what's your uncertainty on the likelihood of this. And so that he can actually uh, rate the quality of predictions taking the uncertainty into account, which I think is absolutely necessary. Uh, but the, the, we cannot, I think, or we cannot uh, at least safely, uh, we cannot without mistakes, go from statements which did not go, go through such a formal filter of asking for quantification and just say, people have been saying this informally, so we could retrospectively attribute a number to that and see how it plays out in the uh, Bayesian equations because the, when you map people's assertions, such as uh, modal assertions, such as certainly, probably, possibly, uh, to and ask them, okay, quantify this, you get inconsistent answers. I mean, people don't uh, assign the same probabilities to the same words. Uh, and, and again, people's intuitions about their own probabilities are wrong, as anybody in cognitive psychology can tell you. Uh, they're not. But again, they're not, they're wrong in some, it's, what is fascinating actually is they're wrong in some cases and not in others. Uh, the, the, the work of Kahneman is absolutely fascinating, showing that certain, like he gives the classic example of the um, people making estimates about uh, being a librarian, being a feminist librarian, and uh, by and, and oh, thinking made, fast oh, and yeah, slow, yeah, yeah. that one, yeah, yeah, the thinking yeah. fast and slow. And, and they show, okay, that is totally ridiculous. And then he makes exactly the same reasoning in the money domain or in the trust domain, and people get it right. <laughs> it's 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 so fascinating how people's ability to reason with probability is actually domain dependent. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's a whole story. So Quantification is a way to get it right. I don't think it can be done retrospectively, but certainly it can be done looking forward, uh, you know, asking people the proper questions. I think that's a use case I would like to support. Certainly not impose it to everybody. Um, that's not a story, but I believe in it. I think it's important. Okay, sorry, long rant. <laughs> Steven, did you get your question answered? I don't feel like we fully satisfied your... Uh, yes and no, I mean, I... <laughs> I, I don't think it was what I was trying to uncover. <laughs> it, it just sounded ambiguous to me when you say that supporting something in terms of adding an argument to a conclusion or an argument that makes a certain conclusion that that impact scoring to me, these are entirely separate. And I, I find no, I, no, I think I think he's saying it impacts belief. And it can, this impact on belief can be reflected in scoring in so far as scoring is one model of belief. But I don't, see how it impacts, be I don't see how it impacts belief because the mere uh, fact that somebody adds a, a supporting argument and if you don't have any belief one way or another on it, it shouldn't affect your scoring. What I'm saying, uh, I, I did give a definition. I'm saying the belief, if, if, a, if there's a support saying that A supports B, I'm saying that the belief is in A given B is should be higher without quantification than the belief in, sorry, the belief in B given A should be higher than the belief in B given not A. Only if you believe- be Higher in or A. equal to. I mean, the higher or equal A. to. Okay. Only if you believe in A and in the relevance of A. No, 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 that's not, what- No, 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 but the, like- belief, <laughs> belief in B given belief in A should be higher than belief in B given belief in not A. That's the definition I'm proposing for support. Now I'm asking is the possibility to come. Okay, the belief, okay, if we say that A supports B, I'm saying that the belief in B given belief in A should be higher than belief in B given belief in not A. 
Yeah, I, I think I agree, but it's a very contrived way of put it put it in a different way. It, no, but yeah, put You're it in a different way. For formal definition. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it's different because it's yeah, then, belief, but whose belief? What you're basically saying is it is no, no, no. by whoever adds it, that belief <laughs> who, who, who the, the belief of whoever believes believe. the support link. Whoever believes the support link should have this relation yes. between the belief exactly. of B and belief yes. of it. Yeah. That's that's, that's what right. it is. Right, right. It's a personal <laughs> thing. It's the, the beholder. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so that's my formal that definition. The, the, what we end up with is shared with multiple people, hence. Right. No, and scoring is, uh, is still useful in that situation. A, 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 and actually, we should see whether scoring, any specific scoring scheme and any specific scoring aggregation scheme maintains that property, because that property is fundamental. Yeah. Which, which property? The proper so belief in B given A should be higher. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Belief in B given. Uh, I have, I have, I have some of these written out. I think some of them are in the white paper, even of of you know some heuristics of what makes for a good um, scoring algorithm. Um, no, that's but, that's, but good. General, axioms that's, of that's because it would be yeah that, consistent that's with the meaning of yeah. axioms of scoring. Yes. I mean, for me. Since the basis of any argumentation is acceptance, for me, for me, it's binary for that reason. I'm only interested to see which premises is wherever is looking at an argument willing to accept, and then whatever logic right, goes from it, that. It's binary, but you don't also you still don't limit like the number of arguments that, that could be made in support or against so, a claim. Sorry, right? What is supposed to be um, binary? I don't get it. His his score. It's all or nothing. I believe it or I don't believe it. Um, ah. he, he, um, he yeah, thinks people, uh, uh, understand or, or, uh, uh, partly it's a user interface thing. And partly it's just a question it's of, a you can believe it or you for don't. Me more than yeah. anything as, as my yeah. outlined before, I mean, asking people for a probability, what statistical probability is it like how much it convinces you, how it, it's very, and even if you define that more. Accurately, the still people are going to respond differently. No, but, but I mean, one second. Is it, uh, sorry, sorry, is it binary belief in claims or binary belief in support? I'm not binary believe believing claims. Okay. Okay. I have well, and belief. support, because support is a claim. <laughs> fair. Oh, both. Okay. That's a fair answer. Yeah. I certainly don't believe that. I, I, I certainly, my belief about the world is not a total function. <laughs> uh, sorry. What do you mean? I'm saying there's tons of claims about, about which I cannot give a binary belief no no no. okay so it's yeah. either it, it's a tri it's a triple it's either uh you believe in it you don't believe it or you don't have an opinion no but you can have an opinion but be confused on the matter which is yeah. his <laughs> mark or antoine's it's... two different axes or whatever right yeah. it's or, just or... how conflicted am i here yeah or or um the user can have like a kind of a certain kind of relationship with uncertainty and is like i'm not going to say i don't believe it or or do believe it, like I'm gonna hold it as something I could possibly believe as I look through more information. I think um, if there's gonna be any type of like scoring, being able to like input percentages. Um, but why, could, if that's the case, why is it a percentage? Why is it not exactly that? Because in a way what I'm arguing for is not necessarily binary, I'm arguing for, a, um, what's the correct term here? Uh, when you have, sorry? Unambiguous. Uh, yeah, or like exactly. To, or, it's not oh, a number. You, it's it's a stance you take. You can say I believe in it. I don't believe in it. I'm uncertain. Uh, or possibly, I need probably. more information. Well, or well, well, what, what you what you want is a kind of have... modal logic, right? Yeah. Certain, yeah. Certainly, I want something possibly, that I can probably. easily compare across people because that aggregate statistics are only as useful as the data that people enter. The reason for me for having a binary so I can easily say, well, 500 people believe it's true, 200 don't believe it's true. Yeah, when I get uh, surveys like that, I hate them. I, they piss me off because they they are, are simplifying something that is complex and I the don't want to give thing, an all or nothing answer. The complex thing underlies it, right? 500 people believe this is true. Yeah, but if I know you're going to be using it to say, no, he supporting supports arguments this. are true. That, that's why you break it down. That, that's why we have an argument. Yeah. No, no, so, but I, th right, I, think, right. I think people believe it is, is false, really. People don't believe things. They believe things in context, conditionally, 
I think I, I, for me, actually, all these things we model or intend to model. Yes. The, the, but, but I'm saying the binary thing is in a way uh, in a way false. I mean, of course, all, all models are false. Maybe but it's a it's a particularly false model. <laughs> it's false yeah. to the point of being not so useful. <laughs> well, it depends on the, your use. I think that's that's the bottom yes. line. Also, note note here that um, it wasn't said, but I think Stephen does not plan on doing any kind of roll up scoring. Which means because there's there's a fundamental question, which is, do you believe in measuring or or showing at all the effectiveness, the relative effectiveness of arguments? Because you can have three arguments you fully agree with, and yet there's one that decides the whole thing for you. So are you capturing that? The only roll-up scoring I do is like how how much has one side or the other been discussed? Like not 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 scoring, only uh like depth of the, the discussion basically. Which I somewhat measuring disagreement is like, more or less what you said. Uh, yeah. It might somewhat reflect bias, like oh, but they're arguing a whole lot more for one side than the other, which is somewhat of a biased way of looking at things. Uh, other Ish than Gallup. that, no, I don't yeah. intend to do roll-up scoring because I do think it that that's what people do in their heads, and I want people to express that in their heads. And for me, the interesting thing is the correlations. People that say that also say that. I think if you can aggregate but, that okay, data, but... you can get a lot of interesting things out of that. Go, get, getting back to my question, are you going to try to capture in any way which was the best argument? Not on the base layer. That's layer two. Uh, that, that's for me exactly the separation. Like I said, the best argument for me is layer two, centralizing disagreement and seeing where people generally agree and disagree. You don't need roll-up scoring for that. That's my point. But why do you need uh, the belief score at, at that level? What do you mean? Why do you need it? How can you see whether, if you if you're looking at a claim, how can you in in a base layer determine whether or not the majority of people believe this? Whether this is a, um, a controversial claim or not? The only way to do that is by checking whether or not this equal amount of people believing it or not believing in it. That's how you can detect controversial stuff. Yeah. The the, the I'm thinking is is there is there a common base layer there, like? What, what I liked about your base layer description in the for, uh, formula formalization domain and, and predicate logic domain was that we can have a linguistic form absent agreement on the predicate formalization. Now, in this case of scoring methods, I'm not sure we have an agreed upon common denominator uh, linguistic or otherwise, that means that we have any common functionality at the base layer. Uh, I, 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 I do tend to agree that, hey, we'll want the, the belief to be pluggable. That means it's all, uh, I don't know if it's layer two, but the layer different than the base layer. But I'm not sure, unlike the other case, that we have some a placeholder to put for it in the base layer. Isn't it the, the common sets we talked about before, Mike Antoine? Isn't that the commonality that you can agree that these are the premises that are relevant? Yes, 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 yes. Without but, the, this. but okay, no, no more than what we needed for the predicate version is what I should have said. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's anything belief specific other than, you know, this affects the belief of that. We don't even know in which direction, <laughs> though, though I think it would be nice if it were all in the same direction as Timothy pointed out. So maybe we should work that in and I'm happy to. Uh, I think that's worth doing. But um, so that the support is a support and not an oppose. And if you want an oppose, you go on the negation. Uh, support and negation. So that's, I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, all the premises somehow uh, affect the belief positively. Maybe that is the only thing in the base layer. And then the support is really a support. It's never an oppose. Wonderful. Well, it, it is, but yeah, yeah I, I, I think that's I, modeling. I, yeah, I still, I still believe in having the uh, Boolean proof. Uh, you know, something about the relative intensity of the support. Uh, like, see, my favorite scoring mechanism is the Delphi one, or a mix of Tetlog and Delphi. 
And then you speak about, you know, how knowable is that thing? How much of an impact does it have? Um, and in a way you're doing the Asian characteristics and you would, I would add uncertainty on, on these uh, to be the plot one. Uh, so Delphi plus the plot error bars. Um, and that's what I would do spontaneously as a pretty basic layer because for me, the system uses the, the, uh, without that, but it's useless for my purposes, which do include decision-making. And I understand that is not in your scope and maybe we can define a layer below that. <clears throat> and I have no objection. The, and, and I do agree that my favorite delta plus set like is just one of multiple plausible systems. And imposing that at the lowest common denominator layer is probably a good thing. It's probably what? It's probably it's probably over constraining. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, Tim will develop his scoring system, I'll develop mine, and we can speak about uh, <clears throat> you know, a base implementation should at least support this model or that model and or not. You know, I think that's perfectly optional. Certainly the tools I'm interested in building will have to support a Bayesian layer. For me, that's a a tool that doesn't is I can share data with, but I'll have to redo all the work, including your tool. Uh, because for me, without the Bayesian layer, it's a bit meaningless for my purposes. Uh, and this is this is the problem of going too low on the base layer, is like, am I getting any value out of importing the data from not in terms of decision making? So not in but you you do contribute to centralizing this agreement to the purpose of the base layer if that if you do build it on top enough. of that that's the value you would get out of it like you you connect yeah. to other layer layer twos basically that's the value yeah, but, but if I, you don't uh, want that there is no value yeah yeah what i'm saying is i'll have to recollect all of the data to make sense out of to make sense of it so the the, the purpose of sharing is less yeah you Would need you? to you, you yeah. need to link extra data to each data point in the base layer, maybe it's and that means with a different way. What you, okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, then I understand you. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but that's, on the other hand, the value, the value, unfortunately true, yeah. the, value, the value you get, though, is that you do see like there's stuff to be recollected here. And that, that is valuable. That is correct. That is correct. I'll accept that. I'll accept that. And, and I don't think that's avoidable. Uh, I don't think that imposing everybody to collect by agent decision is a viable alternative. So. I have to live with that. Okay, we're almost at the hour. It's time for summary. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, me, Felix, me... do you want to summarize it? Because you were listening. You, yeah. you asked for the uh, <laughs> the discussion. So the support, we started out with the support definition. And yeah, we kind of ended up uh, with, uh, if I believe in the support, of A supports B, then if I believe in A, then uh, what no, was your me, phrase? Let, let me, yeah, let no, me please, express it because I did. <laughs> okay, uh, if you believe that A supports, that there's a support from A to B, that A support A is a premise and B is a conclusion in a valid support, then your belief in B, in B given belief in A should be higher for some abstract value of higher that may or may not include numbers, than your belief in B given belief in not A. So that's kind of the lowest common denominator of support that we agreed on, I think. Uh, and then we spoke about separating this very abstract definition from a plugin system of scoring mechanisms, which may follow belief, reasons to believe, and or Bayesian causal uh, networks. And uh, how much of a distinction is there between that and what are the prerequisites for understanding uh, someone's belief and, and how much data do we need to capture to have an accurate picture of someone's belief networks and causal networks, which may or may not be related, which are related, but we're not sure how closely. Um, and we agree that asking people to agree on that scoring is out of scope, though we want to have mechanisms to have a layer where at least Bayesian scoring can be expressed. 
Um, and, but in the base layer, it may be as simple as saying the premise, uh, well, pretty much my rule as stated. And uh, all the, if we have a complex subject in the premise and we didn't go there yet, but if we have a compound claim in the premise, it's understood that each of the claims in the compound should contribute, but that's, that's being pushed outside really. Uh, and then there's all these discussion about what is a form of scoring that accurately models individual belief? And is that something we want to capture? And then how would we aggregate it? And what are the properties of uh, aggregate of individual beliefs? And I don't think we discussed one way or the other where that fits in a base layer or a second layer. I well, guess. We, we, we said most data collections we can think of are unlikely to, we're unlikely to reach universal consensus on, so we'll push them in another layer. I think we did say that. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, anything to add? Um, may, uh, there's, this would start a whole new discussion. Oh. I don't know if we want to do it, but like there's one detail we didn't touch on, which is whether or not in the base layer, there should be something like a, uh, sufficient um, field yeah. on the support. We, we did speak about this. If we did not resolve it, I believe in it. Yeah. I don't know about others. And there's your discussion you introduced, let's not forget it, about mutual exclusion as a claim, uh, which entails a kind of, if I believe in this, if, I, if I'm supporting a claim, then all other, then I'm also indirectly supporting the negation of all the other mutual exclusive claims. Yeah, I, I don't know if but I would model use... it as a claim or as something else. It's a, a, it, a it structure. Has a claim. It's an it has structure. to be a claim because it has to be attackable. Because as Jamie pointed out, you can say, oh, I believe these two are not mutually exclusive. So I'm refusing the mutual exclusion structure. So it has to be a claim. It has to be arguable. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a question of whether or not you, we even do curation through meta debate, right? That, that's that's in that realm of discussion we haven't gotten to. Okay, there. Yeah. I thought that was unavoidable, but maybe not. I, it's probably unavoidable. It's just that we haven't discussed it. That's my only hesitancy there. Yeah. All right, that's the end of the summary. I'm gonna hard stop, so I gotta go. Same. Perfect. See you next time. See you next time. Bye guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye.